the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Lakshmi, my friend. I have been coming for all the master class here since four years, um, with respected chairpersons, President Nagpur Obiganic Society, Secretary Dr. Kshama, uh, Nagpur Obiganic Society, and all the delegates present here, Dr. Jaydeep Tang as well. The topic was very different when Lakshmi talked to me, recurrent failures of fertility treatment. And I was thinking, what am I supposed to speak on this? What treatment I should be speaking first? So henceforth, I decided to speak from the bedroom. The priorities for these today's couple has changed. I swear every month I get one young couple that they don't want any activity in the bedroom and they say, ma'am, finish it off. We want to go ahead with the IVF, finish our family. Yeah, in a way it's good, but still, they need to have their own time. They have changed their priorities. So, <clears throat> ask them to spend some more time between themselves. Something you win, sometimes you learn, but you are always a student. We all know to start, but sometimes the skills we lack is how to start, when to start, and when to stop. So there is no break as far as we are concerned sometimes in the fertility treatment. If you see the bundle of the file of an infertile couple, you have about clomiphene citrate for one and a half years, letrozole for two years, they keep on taking, and sometimes if we stop, the good educated couples, they keep on taking. So, when we, are, when we write the fertility treatment, we ought to tell them that if you take and if you treat yourself more than required, what is going to happen to their ovarian reserve? Once you tell them that if you try to take on, them, on yourself for about more than three to four cycles, your ovarian reserve will deplete. That is the time they will stop. So it is better when we write infertility, I mean fertility treatment, we give on a guard and ask our educated patients and Google masters also that you have to be on guard. As I said, when we are any, any infertile couple, the basics we should not be ignoring. Take a call, as Dr. Jaydeep said very vividly, that don't keep on wasting time with one million of sperm and keep on treating with a medical line of treatment. Trying and failing is better than doing nothing. If a patient is coming with two years of infertility and one million uh, sperm count, and we want to wait till how long? Three months, four months is a pretty short time. We can give a trial and take a call. Don't repeat the same mis mistake and expect the same result. You want to do the same mistake again, but you want to expect the same result. How is it possible? Sometimes simple treatment works. Follow the rule, basics of success, IUI success, and basics of IVF success. We should be knowing this. So as I said, timing of intercourse, lifestyle factors have changed, body weight matters, occupational history, take a very good history. Occupational history matters, pre-existing medical conditions and the drug histories before we start the treatment. I don't have to speak about the timing of the intercourse for um, all the esteemed delegates who are present here. As I said, lifestyle factors matters. All the couples should be counseled to abstain from tobacco use, limit the alcohol consumptions. Now we have to talk about both because in Ahmedabad, there are some parts in the college area when we go, 80% of the girls are smokers and 20% of the boys are smokers. So we have to do the counseling for both. Involvement in the group counseling exercise is more effective than weight loss advice alone. Obesity, as I said, it impairs the fertility and response to fertility treatment, including in vitro fertilization. You can't take 100 kg women on in vitro fertilization IVF and say, okay, no, we have to take her to a counseling session and we have to let her know that this is a morbid obesity and she has to know about her morbidity when she is pregnant after all. So the weight reduction is a must. 
Low body weight, of course, the women who have a BMI less than 19 and who have irregular menstruation are not menstruating should be advised for uh, increasing body weight as well. Male partner, I will not be talking much because Dr. Jaydeep has covered it. Pre-existing medical problems like hypertension, diabetes, epilepsy, thyroid disorders, cardiac problems, drug history and other, other uh, medical problems as well. Drug history is very important nowadays. These are the drug category, what they have been taking. Timely referral to a specialist fertility care is very important. We can't wait till she has lost her ovarian reserve or till she has had an ovarian failure. So a timely referral to a specialist in fertility, in fertility clinic. If a lady is less than 30, 35 years of age, so you are just waiting for 18 months for the treatment. And if she is above 35, we are not going to wait for more than six months. And the other histories which are very common we have been facing. Trying and failing is better than doing nothing. Role of antioxidants, it's very limited, but still it's better before we put them on any invasive procedures or maybe invasive treatment, let them take a call on an antioxidants for a short period of time. Role of micronutrients in enhancing fertility potential in male having oligo, asteno, and oligoasthenospermia OAT. Sometimes, yes, in 20%, it shoots, but in 80%, it is a status quo. So you have to inform your patient that three months to four months, a limited time of uh, treatment is required. And after three months, we take another semen analysis and take a call on it. Cochrane study recommends the use of antioxidants for male infertility. Of course, the pregnancy rate they were, because this is a study they have put in the Cochrane study, 96 pregnancies in 15 trials, including 964 couples. Antioxidants use was associated with a statistically significant increase in pregnancy rate compared to the control pool. So as I said, 20% makes a difference. Don't repeat and uh, repeat the same mistakes and expect the same result. Clomiphen citrate, resistant in PCO. In ovulatory, after six months of treatment, 10 to 30% of the patients fall into this group. Causes, as all, all of us know, obese women, hyperandrogenism, endroanesism, uh, uh, insulin resistance. And second line of treatment, you have to think about in these cases, if they are CC resistant, you have to add on metformin, laparoscopic surgery. Nowadays, it's a debatable issue, but still, gonadotropin plus metformin, and third line of treatment, which is IVF and ICSI. Extended letrozole therapy for ovulation induction in CC resistant cases with PCO, a novel protocol. Similar ovulation rate in 66 versus 61%, higher pregnancy rate was 17% compared to a CC, beneficial in CC resistant PCO cases. But that does not mean that you have to give for one and a half to two years. And you have to accept CC failures when the pregnancy is not achieved despite ovulation over three cycles for 150 milligram dose for over five days. Incidence is 15 to 40% and causes of failure, peripheral anti-estrogenic effects, elevated LHS. Treatment options in CC failures, as I said, you can switch on to letrozole, you can switch on to gonadotropins, you can switch on to mixed therapies. <clears throat> letrozole failure, don't think that this is a Ramban for uh, uh, CC resistant cases. Sometimes you end up having a letrozole failure as well. Total number of cycles is six trials after letrozole. Dose is 2.5 milligrams per day, not more than that. And higher dose, not more than 12.5 per day. We are not increasing the dose any further. Sometimes si simple treatment works. The neglected luteal phase after the natural conception rescue by early progesterone supplementation. When you're treating this type of cases, when you're treating the patients with CC or when you're treating with the patients with the letrozole, sometimes the progesterone support may give a good result. Follow the rules. This is a small flow chart. Investigation and management for an infertile couple in a primary care. Once the couple presents with the infertility, you have to take a proper history and the examination, advice to both the partners 
to to quit smoking and drinking for the ma male i will not discuss anything further on that part of the chart but female consider a early referral over the age of 35 if she is having amenorrhea oligoamenorrhea or any type of previous pelvic surgeries confirm her ovulation with mid luteal progesterone level do not measure thyroid function or prolactin if she is having regular but now it's a protocol so we need to measure if any test results abnormal, refer to a dedicated specialist in fertility clinic. Discuss the results with the couple. Plan the future management. Let alone anything or any type of infertility, once the investigations are done, we need to have good amount of time. We need to have good amount of counseling session with the patients before any you advise on anything. Finally, However the tough infertility is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Second review to the history examination and the findings, if she's going to a specialist care, phone a colleague or a senior and discuss the matter over on her, on her uh, findings. When we are taking an IUI cycles, we see patients coming with 12 IUI cycle. How do we justify this? 12, 15, sometimes 20. Do we justify this amount of cycles, IUI cycles? Never. So the age of the female partner under 35, duration of infertility less than five years, cause of infertility at least one functional normal fallopian, bilateral fallopian tube block and you keep on doing IUI? How good it is. Educate ovarian re reserve. Patient coming with 0.5 AMH and people are taking IUI cycles. It's unjustifiable. So we need to have an adequate ovarian reserve when we are taking an IUI cycle. Because when we are taking an IUI cycle, it is an indirect ovulation study. We want to make two threes, but sometimes we may end up having an five and we are wasting her eggs. So if repeatedly, if we are giving a call on a five dominant follicle, we need to skip and change her uh, cycle to an IVF. S cement parameters post-wash, you cannot keep on doing IUI less than one million and have a three, four IUI cycles. So best pregnancy rate is achieved above 10 million. But still five to 10, it's debatable. You can give a trial, short trial of three months, less than two, send the patient for IVF. So these are the basic requirements for IUI success. Choice of an ovarian stimulation used. You have to target to about two dominant follicle. You cannot target on five dominant follicle. You cannot target on 10 dominant follicle. So number of the fall dominant follicle has to be between one and three. Use of the transvaginal follicle monitoring is do it lavishly. Don't just leave the patient. If you give a 50 milligram of uh, CC to a PCO, she may end up having a flare. So do a transvaginal sonography very, very often. And timing of IUI is necessary. Between 12 to 16, usually highest pregnancy rates are achieved. Interval of HCG injection, 32 to 42 hours, usually recommended. And single IUI, 36 hours after the trigger. Cement preparation technique, for about six million, you cannot do a simple wash you have to take up a double density gradient. Procedure of IUI is important. How you do an IUI is important, and a man or a, or a doctor doing an IUI, how sophisticated the procedure is. You, I mean, having the, holding the vulcellum, pulling the cervix, this is not going to give us the result. And how many IUI cycles? Not more than six. And even after IUI, sending the patient for IVF, how long are we supposed to do the IVF? Five times, six times, 12 times? There is a full stop for that as well. Looking into the maternal age, obesity, smoking, alcoholism, endometrial receptivity, thin endometrium, Asherman's, uterine fibroids, uterine anomalies, hydrosalpings, thyroids, type of the transfers, sperm damage, or taking all these factors into the consideration, we need to counsel the patient before taking up an IVF cycle that what are the chances of the success rate before, before going ahead. That if she comes for IVF cycle, she may not be 100% pregnant. 
So with all these factors and reconsidering all the factors, we need to counsel the patient that you have the chances of 50%, 60% and whatever. So pre-IVF workup for an infertile couple, history is very important wherever you, wherever you are. Examination, investigations, counseling. Why it is necessary to identify the cause of infertility and thereby the diagnosis and thereby to correct the associated adverse factors before treating the primary disorder to decide most appropriate treatment protocol. Individualization of the stimulation protocol is necessary here. You cannot stimulate all the women's non-PCO, PCO, low ovarian reserve, elderly women, young women with the same protocol. So the uh, protocol has to be individualized to decide most appropriate treatment protocol, as I said, type of the drug, starting date, dose, expected response and the problems to assess the reproductive aging and plan her early access and resort to an ART treatment. To get an adequate number of good quality oocytes, you have to classify the patient into normal, hypo, and hyper responders. Age, AMH, and AFC. Selection of, as I said, the protocols, stimulation, uh, stimulating protocols. Ultrasound monitoring with power and the color Doppler. Biochemical monitoring. Ovulation induction with what you want to do, the trigger. You want to trigger with HCG, you cannot trigger and uh, PCO women with HCG, even if you are taking an uh, IVF uh, uh, protocol. You have to take up an agonist trigger in this case. So whether you are going ahead with the antagonist protocol, whether you are going ahead with the agonist protocol, what type of trigger you want to use, take the patient and the couple into the confidence, and then go ahead. Technique of the oocyte retrieval, embryology, lab quality and expertise, IVF and ICSI, selecting the best embryos, Number of the embryos transferred, you cannot transfer five and six and odds, and, and the luteal phase support. Thank you very much. So we need to stop an IVF. If we are having more than six failed or seven failed IVF cycles, you can resort to a surrogacy. Whether we are going up and uh, taking up an um, uh, oocyte donation program, if she is having any problem with the karyotyping, if she is having any problem with the chromosomal abnormality, there are options available for the donor, uh, oocyte donor protocols also. Thank you very much.